today we are going to be taking this chair straight out of the 60s and turning it into something that resembles the restoration hardware chair of my dreams. Oh my gosh, $4,000, what is that? Let's go home and do a mini tour of my living room. Okay, today is a very exciting, long-awaited journey. I think when people always ask me, like, what's one DIY thing that you really wanna try you've never done? I always think of upholstering, or like reupholstering something. I guess we've kind of done small-scale stuff, like making new pillow covers or stuff like that, but we've never really done a chair, like a full chair. So today is that day. I found this beauty here on Facebook Marketplace a while ago. I think I paid like 40 or 60. Upon getting there, I feel like I overpaid, because. You can tell it's had some wear, but the lady told me it was definitely from the 60s, which I think is so cool. So as much as I love the print of it, and I'm sure you guys are gonna tell me, why are you changing it, the print's great, I agree with you. But it's a bit much for my home, and I think this is a perfect project to take on and try and teach myself reupholstering. So I um, have seen this trend, and I think it's called boucle. I don't know, it's very French sounding, but it's this white fabric. It's almost like Sherpa, but make it tougher and more like couch material and I'm seeing it everywhere so I want to try and do that to this chair. I went to Etsy and surprisingly you can buy fabric there. I didn't know that. Went down this rabbit hole there's a whole bunch of fabric sellers on there and I found this which is um I don't know like it's it's not exactly the fabric that I think I want but it's pretty freaking close. It's a bit more of a tighter weave more of like a towel material and less of like that big chunky knotted look I think we want, but you know what? I'm gonna make this work. So I have a loose idea of what I want, but because I've seen this everywhere, I wanna do a better deep dive on my computer to find out what they actually look like, what style I'm going for, what the real thing would even cost me. So let's do that together. Okay, um, new background who? If you haven't seen this video, Check out the cards we made over this entire boardroom space and I just wanna be here all the time. So I am gonna go, I think, CB2 I know for sure has something like this. So let me pull it up. So let's do a little CB2. Okay. Yes, this is what I was thinking of. The Gwyneth Boucle chair. I'm probably butchering the name of this. Do you see how this fabric is like, it's a very kind of rough knotted texture? I love it, I love it so much. So obviously my base chair has wooden legs, which I definitely wanna keep. Um, this one is just all fabric. But what I really like about this is how poofy it is and how round it is. This is really good. Oh my God, and it's $1,400 Canadian. That is so much for a chair. I mean, I understand it's a beautiful chair, but um, I'm hoping we can get somewhere like that for not that much. Let me check out Restoration Hardware because um, I actually got, they sent me uh, their magazine in the mail, which the nerve of them to think that I could afford them. But uh, the front page was all like this boucle stuff. So I know they have something like it too. Uh, fabric seating, here we go. Sofa sectional, the cloud couch. <laughs> A dream, truly. <laughs> Chairs, okay. Their filtration system is not so good on here. If I could search by wood legs that I could, in theory, build this chair because I can add that fabric to it. You know what I mean? Okay, let's say this chair. And um, let's say I want it in this natural. No, that's the member pricing. This is a $14,000 chair. Okay, I found it. This was the chair I was actually thinking of on Restoration Hardware that I saw on the magazine. It's the Sylvain chair. Um, a much more humble price of $3,800. And for the members, $3,000. See, now Ali's like, oh, I, that's reasonable. I could buy that. This one's better. I don't know why that other one was so much money. <laughs> but still, in what world? That's so much money. I guess in a designer's world. It's such a beautiful chair. They describe it as a laid back aesthetic of the 70s. The gently curved back, rounded arm. Are we still talking about a chair? And generous cushioning offer maximum comfort in minimalist form. Yeah, it's beautiful. Okay, this has been enough searching to light a fire under me to do this chair for so much less, knowing that I am saving myself $15,000. So let's do it. <laughs> Okay, so 
I'm gonna like baby step my way into the upholstery process with the fact that I already have a piece that is covered. So I think this is easier than kind of starting from a new piece and having to make your own cover, I think. Because my hope is I can dismantle this and all the separate pieces will give me a template that I just have to copy onto the new fabric and re-put it back together. That is my hope. So step one is gonna be taking this chair apart and trying my best to save the pieces as they are so we can copy and paste them onto the new one. Okay. Wow. So that made it a lot easier because now this is literally just like a pillow top that I just have to recover. Great, feeling less stressed already. Let's take it apart. There's so many staples in this, so many. Okay, so about 500 staples removed later. This is ready to come off. I am nervous to see what's underneath, um, but let's, let's figure out together. Oh my God. What is that? Is this like hay from a farm? Did they do that back then? No, it's not. Is it? I feel like I either sounded really unintelligent there or like I knew what I was talking about. Like in a perfect world, I can salvage this foam, but I don't know. Okay, okay. I thought it was a lot worse, but it has this like nice netting over top, which makes it seem like, you know, it's got its ish together. I'm honestly a little disappointed that there was not a stash of money under here. That's what you expect when you take apart old things always. <laughs> but um, this is good. So, oh yeah, that piece I threw, I'm gonna need it because I need to make a new piece that matches that for this. But I think my next step is to do the same thing that I did here for this guy. So catch it when that's apart. Okay, got all the fabric off and all the staples and nails out and now we have some Nike chair parts and um, I'm gonna have to sand down all the wood and stuff before I can put the real fabric back on. But before we do that, I was kind of thinking that I wanna make this chair even more cushier than it already is because the inspo picks, like they were very voluminous, round, puffy chairs. And although this one, I love the shape of it already. I think we can make it even more fluffy. So I picked up a big sheet of this, just upholstery foam, and it's not that thick. It's only half inch. So I think it'll wrap nicely. So what I'm gonna do is cut pieces to wrap around where there already is fluff and just bulk it up a little bit. And I guess, will staples work on this or will it rip, rip through? TBD, we're gonna find out. <laughs> I've never made a cake in my life, but I imagine this, wait, I have made a cake. <laughs> I haven't made a fancy like cake or as cake in my life, but I imagine that this is what like a big piece of fondant is like. I don't know, that always looks so good on those shows. As I was doing the top, I was trying to decide how much extra fluff to add to the front. I started off with way too much and then took it down a little bit and then ended up having to unstaple it so I could tuck it under instead of stuffing it in. I think I ended up with like the perfect balance of enough added poof. So as you can see, I now have two big marshmallow shapes and I think it's looking good so far. First time upholsterer here, I'm feeling a little confident. Um, before I move on to the fabric stage, these legs need some addressing. They're in rough shape, so I'm gonna sand them down, refinish them, make them magical, and then we can bring this whole thing together. Well, not really, I still have to sew a whole bunch. <laughs> So after I sanded the wood down, I thought I was gonna have to put a stain on, but I actually really ended up liking the color of the wood that it was in its natural state. So I just opted to go for a clear top coat. This is the Varathane satin one, 
and it is my absolute favorite. So after you get one coat on, make sure once it's dry that you give it a light sand with some fine sandpaper. This step is so important. Yes, do not forget this because if you don't, then your clear coat top is gonna be bumpy and rough and you're gonna see paint brush strokes in it and probably not realize until it's too late. So sand between every coat. Okay, I am letting the legs and everything dry, but now it's time to move on to, I think, the last step, which is sewing the new cover for it. This is the most intimidating part because it's the part you're gonna see the best, so I really hope I don't mess up. So, like I said in the beginning, the plan here is, because I took the top cover off carefully, I have all the different pieces, and I'm gonna use them as a template to cut out my new fabric. So I'm going to lay these pieces onto the new fabric and cut them out, making sure to leave more than I think, because I can always trim it down after, but I can't add more if I make it too small. Okay, this is the moment of motherfucking truth right now because it's sewn and I can't go back because I've already cut it. So let's put these on and see how they look. I'm feeling extremely optimistic actually, so that's good. I feel like there's many uh, jokes to be made here, such as me versus my sweatpants after Thanksgiving. <laughs> That was a stretch. Just like this cover! Oh boy. Wow, 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 wow. It's looking really good. Okay, and then obviously, like, the back is gonna need to get stapled down, but that's an after problem. I need to get the top together. But this is looking good, right? You'd sit on this? Do the camera nod. <laughs> the struggle to get these covers over top of the chair parts, you guys, I'm telling you, it was so difficult, but it's probably a good thing because you want your cover to be snug and well-fitting once it's all on. So once the covers are on, the last thing to do is just staple down any of the final exposed pieces that did not get sewn. If I had to summarize it, I'd say it's all about artfully tucking in the pieces and covering any of the raw seams, make it look as clean as possible, and then stapling it into place with the stapler. The final thing to do is put this chair back together. Something I thought would be a lot easier than it was. Maybe it's because I was trying to take this on by myself, but I don't know, this chair did not want to go back together. I had to kind of prop it up and use clamps. You appreciate it more, the harder you have to work for it. Maybe there's something there, but either way, I finally got this chair back together, and oh my gosh, she's beautiful. I cannot believe how well this turned out for being my first real upholstery job. I don't think I did that bad of a job. Let's check out where we started. Oh my God, that pattern. It was something, it was a statement. <laughs> but I am loving how it's looking now, but don't leave. Hold on, there's still more to the video. So I kind of figured that since I'm taking this chair home literally with me to my house to style it right now, it could be fun to bring you guys along with me and show you how I style it. Also the fact that I've changed a lot of things in my home due to being home so much recently. I know you guys have been requesting an updated home tour, I see you, but I don't want to do the full thing because I have plans to do something in my kitchen eventually. So I'm waiting to do that video first, then we'll do the whole house. So in the meantime, to tide you over, let's go home and do a mini tour of my living room and show you how I'm gonna style this chair. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> Let me give you the mini tour first, and then we can figure out where this wants to go. Okay, I don't know what's different since you've seen it last, probably a lot of things, so I'm just gonna quickly run through basically everything. Starting on this wall, this is the coolest vase that I actually thrifted at the thrift store, and I'm in the process of doing a really cool finish texture to it, and I'm gonna document that, or I am documenting it on my Instagram, so follow me there if you wanna see 
more. This is a piano, which I got for free, <laughs> and I'm kind of in the works of relearning how to play it. This is a live edge shelf, one of many in my home, as you guys I'm sure know. I DIY'd this out of a piece of live edge wood, and it's on the wall with some floating hardware. And on top are all of my records and albums. This is one of two of these arm sconces, I think you call them, from CB2. I will link them below if they're still available. The other one is over here. Down here is a little basket that just has all of my workout stuff in it, um, yoga mat and whatnot. Oh, ignore that shoe pile over there. Over on this wall, this shoe cabinet is Ikea and a bunch of our hats are just on the knobs. This mirror is also Ikea. This jug was vintage, it was actually gifted to me, and these little um, candle wall sconces I got off Etsy, and they are vintage Scandinavian, I think, which is very, very cool. This is the pet cube. <laughs> if you saw my smart home video, um, I talked all about this. This is basically a camera that I can watch Danny on when I'm at work, and it shoots out treats. It's really fun. <laughs> All right, on to the main living space. We spend like most of our time here if we're in the house. Starting here. If you guys saw my backyard makeover, which I will link in the cards, I got these stools slash side tables from Article and I swear I fell in love with them so much that I wanted to bring them inside instead of keeping them outside. So I put one here and one way over there on the other side of the couch. I don't know, I just feel like it was like the perfect kind of end extension to this couch. It just makes it feel more complete and I guess like it almost feels like it makes the couch feel bigger because your eye just sees all of this as a big L. This couch is the Nakabe couch from Ikea. I don't know if they make it anymore, but I do like it a lot. Since then, we've gotten it recovered. This is a white cover from BEMS and it looks like an L-shaped couch, but actually this is the couch and then this is an ottoman. I just have them pushed up together so it creates kind of the illusion of an L-shaped couch. Okay, on to this window. Um, in one of my most recent DIY diary episodes, I gave this entire window a serious makeover. Go check it out to see what it looked like before, but uh, if it's not clear, I have a serious love for Live Edge and in that video I made this big Live Edge piece that kind of recovered the previous wood top, which was not cute. In that video, I put up white curtains, but since then I've swapped it for kind of these taupey colored ones. Just because the white ones weren't exactly the perfect fit to cover this window when they were closed, they were a little too short, so we've got these ones instead. They're from Ikea. A more fun recent addition to this room is this disco ball. This was thrifted, and if you catch it at the right time during the day, it makes all these really cool lights around the wall, which I like a lot. Um, and I think, I don't know, it just adds a little bit of fun whimsicalness to this room. I think that's a key thing to making over any space, is just adding personal touches of things that are different and unique. Uh, for me, it's, that, it's the disco ball in the window. This I've owned since my very first house. I think it's one of the first plants I ever bought in my first house. And literally just last week, it sprouted its first leaf with holes inside of it, and I'm so proud of this guy. He's growing so big. This is, I think it's called a string of hearts plant. And this one grows so quickly that every time I water it, I have to give it like a weekly haircut down here to keep it healthy and it's kind of fun. Okay, in this corner, this is the thing I think I get questions about the most and it is my electric fireplace. The story with this is I got it off Kijiji from someone who was selling it and she didn't know much about it either. I think she said her husband was a designer or home stager and he had it and didn't want it anymore so she was selling it. I got it for a ridiculously good price and I think it's, the most perfect like 70s style design. And it is electric, not real obviously because the <laughs> pipe doesn't go anywhere, but I have it hooked up to a smart plug along with some other little things. So when I say, turn on my fireplace. Okay, turning on fireplace. There she goes. And it makes this really cool faux fire effect that I think is just so cozy. And I have it running almost every night, even in the summer, that's how much I love it. Dried grasses I get a lot of questions about too. These are pompous grass, I think you say. Um, if you're in Toronto, I got these from Flocks on Danforth. If not, there's so many sellers of this on Etsy. I'm sure you can find them. This TV unit I gave a makeover to as well in one of my DIY Diaries episodes. We'll link that below. I did the cane and the new knobs and all that. This was an Ikea thing. Again, don't know if they sell this anymore. This also is something I get a lot of questions about. This is a Google Nest. It's one of the Google Homes, but it's the hub which means it's got like a bigger screen on it. You can ask it questions like you can a regular Google Home, um, but I love that it displays the time. 
because it kind of acts like the clock in this room. This is a vintage film reel. This was a gift um, many years ago from someone and I actually don't know what's on it. I get asked that a lot. But one day I'd love to hook it up to a projector and find out. This coffee table is one of the more recent changes to this space too. It is a travertine coffee table, which is a type of limestone. So it is stone. The story with this table is that one of the many antique slash vintage stores I follow on Instagram had a square travertine coffee table that was for sale and I DM'd her immediately because I felt in love with it but then someone had already claimed it first so that was sad but then <laughs> I was on a serious hunt to find more travertine because I loved the look so much that I found this round guy on Facebook marketplace someone was selling it and I honestly like this shape even better so there you go before this one we had a much taller rectangle coffee table and going with the lower option has made this room feel so much bigger and more open so hot tip lower furniture makes rooms feel bigger Okay, this side of the room has stayed roughly the same for a while now, but I don't know how much of this was in the last home tour, which again was so long ago, but I'll go through it quick. This table was a Kijiji find. Don't know where it's from originally. These benches are Ikea. This chandelier is West Elm. This chair is sort of a more recent thing. It's a Seska chair and I got it off Facebook Marketplace. As you can tell, I just love finding antique or vintage or thrifted things for my home. I just feel like it brings so much more character into a space than buying it all from a store. Just my two cents. This tray was from a That Cost How Much episode and I still have it because I love it. This um, desk wall shelf thing, I think it's from CB2, but again, got it off of Kijiji. And the drawer unit below it is from Ikea. And lastly is this big boy chair. This is a struck tube chair, which I still love very much, but it's so big for the fact that it only seats one person. So I guess now we need to decide if he's being replaced by this or what we want to do. Yeah, let's play around. Okay, after moving things back and forth and back and forth, I finally decided on a layout I think works, so let me show you. I really thought I was only gonna keep one of these chairs in here because I thought it might be too much to have the two of them together, but upon doing some reflection, um, I realized we have friends over all the time, I mean, even more so before COVID, but we really needed more seating, and so I decided to move the Seska chair because it was a decorational chair more so than it was a seating chair, and keep both chairs, then that means more seating. So we've got the brown one over here and the newly white upholstered one here. Also, you might be wondering about this sphere pillow here. In the spirit of getting close to the restoration hardware chair, I thought it'd be a fun challenge to try and DIY that round pillow they had on the chair as well. It was a journey, it involved some serious math, so I did a mini tutorial on that and it's gonna be in an IGTV video on our Instagram, so go over there if you wanna know how to do it. I'm not sure what the purpose of these are. Tell me Restoration Hardware. I mean, they're very cute and they look cool, but can you really sit against them like a normal pillow? I don't know. What are your thoughts on the sphere pillow? Tell me below. Of course, I didn't get around to mentioning absolutely everything in this space because that would take all day, so if there's anything specific I didn't mention that you wanna know where it's from, leave me a comment and I will try to get back to you. Also, I'm gonna link what I can in the description box as well. But I am constantly moving my furniture around, um, as you guys know, so I don't think this will stay like this forever, but I think that is the fun of design, is that you get to play with it and move it around as many times as you want. There doesn't need to be an end to a room. I actually think that's kind of boring if a room is done and then it's just stale forever. I like that rooms have energy and flow and vibes and pieces can move depending on the needs of the space. So I hope you enjoyed that. I am so happy with how this chair journey turned out. There are a ton more makeovers from our office, Kelsey's home. I have some stuff planned for my home down the road. So make sure you subscribe because I don't want you to miss it. All right. Thanks so much guys. See you. Bye.